Welcome to week 18. We are the recovery. You're back. I am back. Yeah, you're back. And this is week 18. Can you guys believe it? You know, uh, like we are the uh, we are the recovery team. This is the weekly huddle. And we want to start this segment off by first of all saying happy new year to everybody. Hope everybody had great holidays. Hope you guys had great holidays. We miss you, Randy. Happy New Year. Uh, y'all didn't miss me. <laughs> we did miss you. Y'all didn't miss me. You know, one of the things that uh, I wanted to talk about first because it's it's uh, it's an article that I read yesterday in the paper and it's kind of tugging at my heartstrings because I kind of felt yeah I kind of felt for this guy and and I'm talking about Joe Thomas he is a nine-time All-Pro left tackle for the Cleveland Browns mm-hmm. here is a guy who nine times on a on a really not very good team has mm-hmm. made it to the Pro Bowl. He, he has started 136 consecutive games. I mean, this guy is a rock. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's probably, he is the best tackle in the league, best offensive mm-hmm. lineman, maybe. So here's a guy that's on a team like the Cleveland Browns. What is he going to do? How does he come out of this thing smelling like a rose? And is that by saying, you know, it's time to let me go. Let me, let me go find my way somewhere else. You know, mm-hmm. get with a team that has a chance. Or do I stick it out, hope, hope to be a part of the big turnaround that's probably never going to happen, no. you know, in his career? Well, what, what is he playing for, Randy? Is he playing for a, a championship now, or is he playing just so, so that he can have the finances to be able to support his family? I, I think at this point, a guy like that, he's proved everything. Yeah, he's proved he that he's a rock. He's proved right. that he's durable. He proved mm-hmm. that he's the best in the game. Mm-hmm. I think it's time that... He gets a little selfish, you know, which is something I didn't have the opportunity to do because we didn't have free agency back then. You know, you were stuck where you were, and you either sat out a year and then went into free agency, or 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 you just you didn't play. No, the only player that I remember that actually uh, was selfish and and thought about his life and his legacy and and wanting that world championship was Gary. Uh, Gary, 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 uh, what, man, what was his last name? He played for the Denver Broncos, and I know because I'm the one that got traded for him. Gary Zimmerman. Yeah, He's right, a Hall of Fame right. uh, um, lineman now, left tackle, actually. Mm-hmm. A fantastic guy and, and did a great job with the Denver Broncos, but he really wanted to get away from, I believe it was Minnesota at the time, and so he came over to the Denver Broncos. This is back in the early 90s, 91, 92. I was traded for that and because he won that world championship, so I, I completely agree. And I'm not sure what the guy is playing for. What does he want? What is he looking for? What is he looking for? As, you as know, I think at this point, play? you have to start playing for a ring. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, you've done everything, and now it's time to get a little selfish. Uh, you know, when I the, the first time I ever heard of anybody really holding out is back when Elway, when yeah. he was drafted by the Colts. That's right. You mm-hmm. know, yeah. and that was during my draft. So, you know, he was like the first one who really showed a big pair. Right. You know, that yeah. was almost unheard heard of what he did but it worked out great for him Mm -hmm. but he had that kind of leverage and I think Joe has that kind of leverage and and how many other players around the league you know you look at a guy like uh, uh, well you can't really say J.J. Watt because the Texans are in the playoffs this year but but there's some great uh, Woodson you know there's a guy who's proven himself year when do you get a little selfish and say it's time to move on it's not about loyalty and all that it's time for me to go try to get a ring well speaking about selfish I I think uh, Manning I'm thinking about him and his career and his legacy and how he wants to end his career with this world championship. How this year he had this mishap with the injury and many of us counted him out for the rest of the season, if not even his career. But it looks like the guy, after he went back out there on the field, just sparked something. I mean, we, we, we got the, 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 the AFC with Osweiler. And then we clinched it now with Manning going back in. And so I know with, with, with the talent that he has, and if he just kind of rethinks the way he's going to be utilized, even with the rest of his career, if he continues to play, he needs to be fresh. And when I saw him overthrow that pass, I knew that actually that was a good thing. Because how many people have you seen Manning overthrow in his career, let alone true. Uh, right. this year? Right. And so I knew there were some things that were going to happen. And so once he went back in the game, now I'm starting to see a whole different picture. And we'll get back to that in another segment. But mm-hmm. I'm really excited about what he's doing to try to make sure that he gets a world championship before he hangs his well, Randy, Just to, to, to uh, echo what you're saying, I don't think it's being selfish at all. This guy has proven himself. He's been there for nine years. You don't even hear about the guy. So obviously the guy hasn't squawked or complained about anything. He's been to the Pro Bowl. So I think it's time that he does get something to show that he's been that, that rock. You know, So if he plays or wants to go somewhere that he can get a chance to win a Super Bowl, I don't think that's a selfish thing at all. I yeah. think that shows his competitiveness. Yeah. He showed his loyalty to the Cleveland Browns. 
So it, just, it may be time to move on. That's true. Something. I could think back too. But uh, you can remember he was flamboyant. He wanted to chase the money, but he did get himself out of Atlanta. That was Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders. You remember right. he went Deion. from he went to San Francisco yeah. to go get a ring. Then Jerry brought him over to Dallas right. to help him get a ring. That's right. And then that was his career. You know, he he did leave a, a franchise like Atlanta yeah. that he said he wanted out. He see he wasn't gonna go nowhere further. He lost right to broadcast. Yeah. And, and yes, think about exactly. this though. I mean, what do we play for? Yeah, we get the money in the beginning, but after you've been there for a few years, yeah. you know, you're playing for that ring. Right. Man. That's right. the thing. I mean, and and it haunts Dan Marino to this day that he hasn't gotten the Super Bowl yeah. right. So is that the legacy you want to leave as a player that's been a part of a team for you know ten, fifteen years or? five or six years. So I think yeah, at the end of the day, you know, most people think it's for the money. Yeah, when we get in, yeah, we want the money. We want the finances to secure our future. But after a while, it's about the love of the game. Well, let me ask the four of you, how does that feel not having that championship? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's tough. Well, you, uh, know, yeah, well, you notice he said championship. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. I understand, though. Right. He said Super Bowl. Right. right. It's different. Yeah. <laughs> but getting, back to, but getting back to your great question, though, you asked, Randy. You can imagine how he felt on that exit, you know, your exit interview from, you know, what you're going to be doing on the offseason mm -hmm. and all that. This man don't been through some turmoil up in, this up in Cleveland, man. Especially yeah. these days. Oh, my God. They're from the from the franchise, from uh, from upstairs to downstairs. Did you so, say exit interview? You know how they do the exit interview when we are? Uh, no, I, I raked all my stuff in a trash bag <laughs> and walked out the back door. <laughs> I don't remember having an accident or anything. Yeah, that's something new, man. Sam Watson said, see ya. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Well, that's that's it, right. it, right. it, just turn in your playbook. Right, that right. Make sure we get your playbook <laughs> and, <laughs> and all your grades. And then we also found out why um, these guys never made it to the World Championship, to the Super Bowl. Because I just found out before we started this segment that there was alcohol on the airplane. I don't know if we can put it out on the tape, but uh, we won't we'll talk about that at another time. Yeah, yeah I don't gonna, know what team you're playing on. We're going to save the NFL. We're going to save the players. <laughs> well, while we're on the subject, which team do you think is the worst team in the NFL this year? Cleveland. I mean, we're, I know we're talking about great players that play on bad teams. So I know. Who has that answer? Cleveland. You think so? Yes. <laughs> Why? And, and obviously by the record, but uh, in, the, in the grand scheme of things, we uh, were able to have a worst record, one of the worst records, number two worst record, mm -hmm. and we're gonna we're gonna be able to uh, come out getting a first first or second pick in the NFL draft. So it worked out best for us. But man, let me ask you this: Yes, it doesn't start from the top down. And, and doesn't it start from the ownership. ownership. You, know, you, know what, you right. know what? That was obvious. It does start from the top and goes down. But the owner has made some. Uh, very good decisions, as I mentioned on several times. When? He, he when did he start making decisions? He fired everybody. Oh, okay, okay. He fired every, every year. That, 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 guys, remember, Third coach what, I said, what I said, he, he was going to fire the GM. He was going to fire the head coach. You did. This has been done. Right. And now he's right. going to, what he's going to do is bring in a new uh, GM and a new head coach who will, I I'm will sure. promise you will go out and venture into the free agent market and bring in top quality Free agent, veteran, free agent who will help this team become a winner again. Well, if he wants it's to fire, player, if, if he wants to fire Johnny Football, he's going to have to contact Vegas because, from what I hear, Johnny Football had missed the football game, was supposed to be at home, and was hanging out in Las Vegas. Well, Johnny you have to find him first because yeah. he's in the sky. <laughs> I, I think I think Johnny kind of fired himself. Is he okay? So you I, think that that meeting they're supposed to have? In fact, I think they're having it as we speak. I think I, I truly think that. Uh, uh, you won't, you won't hear anything else about Johnny in Cleveland. So he'll end up in D Dallas, you think, guys? I think at Dallas. But once again, gentlemen, this is where we come in at, you know, to help this young man to possibly save his career. He needs someone like us in his corner to be there with him to coach him along the way. And for all these weeks, we've been That's talking right. about being rehab coaches and mm -hmm. how everyone needs a coach. And there's so many players that are in need because they're making millions mm -hmm. of dollars, but they're running around like kids with uh, candy, lollipops and, and just don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. They need someone that can mentor them and keep them on track while they're in the league. Absolutely. Um, unfortunately, though, I feel you know, about that, Sean, but you got to understand, you know about all the dishes. he got to want the help. Mm -hmm. he, by, him, by him getting probably fired today, he need to be stripped. Yeah, no, no, he just need, he need to be stripped to his core. So he can see, hey, you ain't no more Johnny football right now. Mm -hmm. it, this is serious business. You're not bigger than the NFL. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. it, well, it, it, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Randy. Well, they're going to have to get something for him. I mean, yeah. it, it is a business decision. And, and even if he winds up in Dallas, here's a kid that I would take a chance on if I knew that he had some good structure in his corner. Mm -hmm. If he had a good accountability. If he had rehab coaches. If he had rehab coaches. You know? Somebody that, that kept him. 
in some kind of structure and accountable because he's a great player. We know that. He makes things happen. He's magical on the football field mm-hmm. when when he can perform, and he doesn't have any distractions. So, I mean, it, uh, we, we talked about this kid all year long, but, you know, I still have hope for him, mm-hmm. but in the right situation. You know, I think I, I, I think it comes a time when – Johnny has to grow up and realize and realize he's in the NFL, not the NCAA. You know, he is play, playing professional football. Right. The things that he was able to or get CFL. away with, exactly. <laughs> the things that he was able to get away with uh, yeah. uh, in college, you can't get away with in the NFL. Yeah. You know, this is a this is a business, and we, these are adults, guys who take the job very seriously. And if you don't, if you come there with all these different antics that he's doing right now, you know, team teammates. Don't want to be around him. That's right. They don't want. Him. He's more of a distraction than anything. And right now, the last thing that Cleveland needs is, a, is more dis- distraction. Get rid of the guy. You know, let him go where he ever wants to go. But he needs to be gone from Cleveland. He's a cancer in the locker room. Exactly. Right. right. And you know what? Not everybody answered my "What's the worst team in the NFL to date?" <laughs> or the best team. So we'll do that in the next segment. We'll be right back. Behavioral Health of the Palm Beaches Recovery Center for Men provides quality, evidence-based treatment to men battling addiction, offering medical detox, expert counseling from licensed clinical therapists, and activity-based therapies. We help men overcome their addiction and rebuild their lives. We understand the unique substance abuse issues that men face and are ready to help you take your life back. Visit rehabformen.com to get your fresh start. Welcome back to week 18 of the Weekly Huddle. We are the recovery team. And, and, you know, guys, we talk every week in here. We talk about cocaine. We talk about heroin. We talk about prescription pills. We talk about flaca. I mean, we've, we've covered everything. Yeah, we and we, we know how bad everything is out there. And, you know, something came came to mind. Uh, I was I was dealing with, with, a, uh, with a, a, a friend of mine's a son the other day, and they were talking about Abusing Adderall, abusing Vyvanse, uh, ab- abusing uh, prescription uh, benzos, and, and the conversation went on and on and on, you know, about how how bad everything had gotten out of control. And right towards the end, they told me how much that person was also drinking. Mm. And I'm thinking, holy cow, you know, that that is a recipe for disaster. That's that's just inviting death in right there. You no, know, really, Randy, um, alcohol, alcohol. Um, it's kind of interesting that we're even talking about this today because last night at around uh, 12.30 in the morning, I got a text from a friend uh, named Joe Interventionist. You know Joe. Mm-hmm. Uh, a friend of I, ours actually uh, um, was in the hospital and, and having an operation on his pancreas, and obviously pancreatitis, and we lost him. And so it, it's kind of interesting that we're talking about this. And, and last night I mourned with the family, and I, I thought of myself and, and how many times I had uh, pancreatic pancreatitis and, and how many times uh, they told me that it was starting to shut down everything inside my body and it was just a matter of time that you could go so far with alcohol that you can't come back. It's just, you, you, it will kill you and the, the, the detoxification mm-hmm. and, and the complications with that and you never know and to this day I know I'm going to have some permanent damage because of my alcohol usage. Now as far as stats and what's happening around the, this country and, and over the years, in 2006 there were 22 deaths uh, that involved alcohol. In 2014, there were 31,000, which, if you look at opioids and, and other drugs, there were only 29,000, so far and above, um, even though it's, it's kind of a stepchild, but alcohol is killing way more people than anything. Mm-hmm. Even, you can even compare it to car accidents or, or, or gun-related. You're looking at gun-related and, and car accidents, only 34,000 this past year. Mm-hmm. So alcohol mm-hmm. is killing the world. Well, actually, according to the Alcohol Center um, in Atlanta, there's 105 105,000 related deaths uh, because of alcohol. So it's, it's a great number out there. And alcohol is a, you know, and also it leads to the use of other drugs. Of course. You know, you, you start with the alcohol, you start with the beer or a glass of wine or some other type of uh, alcohol drink, and then it leads to the cocaine and all the other stuff that, you know, we experiment with. So it's, it's been around for a long time. We know el- alcohol has a great, great history in this country. Um, the prohibition and all those, you know, date back to all those times there. So it's been around for a very long time. It's always been a drug of choice for many people to drown their sorrows, their, you know, their depression, so forth and so on. So it's been there. It's going to be there for a long time. And we know the effects that it has and that it will continue to have. Let's open this up. Now, I think this is a, a real key thing, Randy. What is it that, that someone can understand and know that they actually qualify to be an alcoholic? 
Well, I think you end up just like uh, what defines addictions, anything that makes your life unmanageable. You I think that socially we accept alcohol mm -hmm. so much that we overlook it for so long. Right. And, of course, at that point, it's at the point of no return. People yeah. need help. Um, but, you know, it's a problem that's never going to go away. It's mm -hmm. out there. It's, it's, it affects our youth. You mm -hmm. know, it affects people's job performance. It, it affects our incarceration rate. You know, it affects sex crimes, things, everything across mm -hmm. the board. You know, alcohol is, is, is the, the main uh, denominator there, the common denominator. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's not going away. It's only getting worse. And we don't talk about it enough. That's I think right. we focus on drugs, and 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 and, and that's what we do. But yeah. we, alcohol is is the biggest problem by far. Yeah. You know, speaking of talking about it, when, when uh, myself and the other guys, when we work with the, the, the young men here at Behavioral Health, uh, especially on the weekends, we have sixty to a hundred guys, depending on mm -hmm. the season. Um, but I talk a lot about alcohol and how the use of it. You know, you use casually when you're young, and so here you are that's using true. socially, and you go up this ladder. It's, and this arrow is going up. And once you get to a point where, like you said, it becomes unmanageable, where your life starts to fall apart, where you're losing your home, you're losing your job, you're losing your marriage, then you hit this plateau where there's no way, you can't go back down that curve to social use anymore. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand that complete abstinence from anything, especially alcohol, which is a gateway, you have to go towards recovery. Otherwise, you will die. Well, think mm -hmm. about this with alcohol, too. It's, it's a market for it. You can market alcohol like you, can do, you can't do the Absolutely. other drugs. That's I mean, true. you've got the rappers and all these hip-hop yeah. guys. They got alcohol's name after them or they started like, Absolutely. I mean, Puffy, he got Ciroc. Mm -hmm. right. So you've got these guys that it's on TV, it's seen, it's getting to our young kids, and, and it's seen as a, a normal, cool thing to do. $250 you know? billion dollars spent in 2010 alone. Yeah. yeah. So like, just for a drink. Like the other evening, I'm in the, uh, the store. The clerk was, uh, it was about five guys in there. You can tell these guys were hammered. They still, they went to go get some more uh, <laughs> cases of beer. But this kid. New was, Year's, that's right. Yeah, and this kid came in, you know, uh, probably about 22, 23. But, mm -hmm. you know, he still carding him. For some cigarettes, and I'm like, yo, you shouldn't be serving them no more alcohol. But yeah. well, like you said, it's a big business. They're gonna try right. to get their money, and it means necessary. Absolutely. And it's such a big business that the yeah. NFL buys into it. So look at all the uh, yeah. look at all the commercials. Right. Uh, What's the gonna be the commercials. next Bud Light commercial this year? Very marketable. It's true. So I mean, that, it's a problem. It's not going away. I think we need to focus more on it and uh, educate people mm -hmm. of how things get away from you mm -hmm. so quick. And uh, we'll be right back. I couldn't stop. I couldn't imagine not taking handfuls of pills every day. And it was just, it was such a dark place to be. And I had lost all hope. I needed a miracle. When I crawled in that door at the detox that day, my life changed that very day. Um, I didn't know how they were going to help me. I didn't even know why they would want to help me. But I was ready to do anything that they told me to do. Welcome back to the recovery team. And guys, it's money time in the league. It's playoffs. It's time to get down uh, to the I'm sure down. it didn't come down exactly like we thought it would back in week one. Right. But here <laughs> it is. Here it is. Time to go. And uh, we've got some great games this week. We don't have to talk about the Broncos this week because they got, they've got some oh, time off. We don't have to talk about the Patriots. About they got a week off. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about the games that are playing. Let's talk about the Steelers and the Bengals, and they are at the Bengals. So right. What do you think, Mac? I, I, I'm picking these Steelers. Uh, you know, the Bengals, I'll guarantee you, in their mind, they wanted to play anyone except Pittsburgh. Okay. Pittsburgh has the uh, Bengals number. Uh, right now, Pittsburgh, they're hot, and they're a playoff team. Big man, he's playing great. Uh, the offense is suspect, but I think Pittsburgh will be able to score enough points to come out ahead uh, in this game. I guarantee you, right now, the Bengals locker room, they're saying, guys, amongst themselves, we really don't want to play, didn't, did not want to play uh, the Steelers. I agree. I agree. I think the Steelers have some momentum. I'm, I'm, I'm going with the Steelers, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how about those Chiefs and Texans? Um, I'm definitely going to go with the Chiefs here. I mean, Andy Reid is you know, such a great guy and, and, and preparing his players. And we see how the Chiefs had to surge on towards the end of the season. I think, they, I think they're just too much powerful uh, for, for the Texans right now. And I think the Chiefs are going to come out victorious in this. And I think they're going to be a team to watch from this point on. 
Uh, I think you're right. And, you know, Andy Reid has been there before. That guy oh, yeah, knows, he knows how to coach a team and get Absolutely. them ready for a playoff game. Yeah. So he is a player's coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I like the Chiefs, too. Who's doing the Seahawks and the Vikings? Well, I, that's me. I, I hate talking about the Seahawks, and I hate talking about the Vikings because <laughs> of the Vikings <laughs> cut me. But um, the Seahawks have been there, obviously, and they beat the Denver Broncos uh, in, in the championship. Uh, they're playing well. They're really hot right now. And, uh, again, they're playing against the, the Vikings. But I, I just don't see how – the Vikings, with not the experience to get into the Super Bowl and having a great coach there in Seattle, that they're going to be able to beat Seattle. So. And I think it's going to come down to quarterbacks, too. You know, I, I wish I was a bigger Bridgewater fan, yeah. and I'm really not. But, yeah. but man, I, I really think it's going to come down to quarterbacks. And, and the Seahawks have been there. You know? Yeah, sure. they have. So I'm going Seahawks. How about the other NFC game? Well, I wish my Eagles was soaring a little bit. <laughs> 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 you just had to <laughs> slip them in somehow. Yeah, well, anyway, well, on a brighter note, but the Packers, I think, is in trouble right now. You know, um, Aaron Rodgers seems like he's not comfortable right now with his line and the way they're running game not being sufficient. And he, it's, it's showing that he missing Joey Nelson real bad. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I really like the Redskins. Mm-hmm. I really do because I see Gruden got this Kirk Cousin. And these guys are rattling around this Kirk Cousin. You yeah, know, D.C. Right. is a tough place to be playing. Yes, yeah. and, and this guy is really is showing that he can play. Absolutely. I guess he he played himself a nice little contract, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I'm going with the Redskins. He's really come on. And has anybody even heard from my boy, RG3? I know. You're right. <laughs> he, he, he's yeah. playing a free safety for the... Toronto area. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 hey. You know, I, I'm RG1. We don't know who RG2 yeah, yeah, yeah. is, but RG3 has been Mac Mac just Mac I'm worried about my Mac boy up there. We got to we got yeah, Mac, him Mac don't have any pity on anybody. <laughs> well, has these playoffs turned out like you guys thought they would? You know what? You, you mentioned earlier that uh, no one could have picked it, but I think I picked it perfect. If you look at my record this year, I know I'm bragging oh, about it. Oh, we will. But I really we'll knew the Broncos were going to be there. Uh, In fact, when I take a look at uh, the Pittsburgh playing against Cincinnati, uh, I'd like a grudge mat- match uh, between Pittsburgh and the Broncos if they win. The, the team who I would hate to see win, and I think uh, someone picked them earlier, was Kansas City. Mm-hmm. And I would hate to see Kansas City win because no matter how Kansas City is playing, when they have to go into Denver, Colorado, it's always a tough game. So yeah. it's going to be yeah, really to tough. It, it, it will play against anybody except for Kansas City to make it to the Super Bowl. I tell you what, from the NFC standpoint, I would hate to play Seahawks throughout mm-hmm. the play because yeah. they are they they turning it on at the end yeah, of the season, are. and you know they they have a lot of playoff experience from the players that they already have, mm-hmm. so they they gonna be a treat to see. Uh, you know, to, to me, the Cardinals is a team to stay away from. Mm-hmm. They are the ones that are on fire, yeah. mm-hmm. and they have a ton of momentum. You know, in I, I have not heard anybody mention the Panthers. That's you know because they're going to be in the Super Bowl. I, I agree. You don't no, know that. I, I, don't I agree. Know that. I, don't my know that. I don't know that. I'm not so though. Any, my prediction there, guys, remember, you heard it here first. <laughs> Panthers, Patriots. Wow. Super Bowl. The Patriots are so beat up, they can't beat anybody in the backyard but, brawl. But, but you know what, brother? You know what? <laughs> They're going to have to go the to the dust, prison and break out what's you know what? name so he can come When the pitch. dust is mm-hmm. settled, when the dust is settled, who's already standing on top? The only healthy player I they have is in prison right I, now. I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> when the dust is settled, who's standing on top? I never, I never bet against Tom Belichick. 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 I don't bet against him. I love I the guys. I just don't see how they can do it. Well, and that's that's pretty much... Everything for this week, right? Yeah. 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 You guys got anything else you want to talk I'm about? I'm just looking forward to the games. Looking forward to uh, hopefully uh, getting out to the Super Bowl so we can save some lives. Won't be long. We'll be there mm-hmm. soon. That's yeah. right. And as always, if you or anybody you know is suffering from this disease of addiction, give us a call. We all have Facebook pages. You can get in touch with us at bhpalmbeach.com or any one of our Facebook pages or Athletes in Recovery. And uh, thank you. 2016, let's do some change. That's right. It's going to be a great year.